Get ready, because today we're going to talk about power fantasies, wish fulfillment stories, and what writers can learn from them. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. My recent video on the 10 core elements of storytelling got some good discussion going, and one of my subscribers brought up the topic of wish fulfillment and how it works in stories, how it can make your stories more fun and accessible. And as that discussion continued on, it spilled over to the topic of power fantasies. And we're going to talk about these two things today. If you're not familiar with either one of them, don't worry because I'm going to define what each one of these is, what is wish fulfillment, what is a power fantasy. I'm going to give you some examples of each. Then we're going to talk about why certain audiences hate power fantasies while other ones love them. And finally, we're going to wrap things up by talking about the important things that writers can take away from these types of stories. But we'll start things off by talking about what wish fulfillment is. And it's a valuable storytelling tool. It's the idea of satisfying the unrealistic desires of an audience. You have to remember most audience members out there, they live pretty normal lives. They go to school, they go to work five days a week, maybe more than five days, and they crave more than that. They crave escapism. They want excitement and an adventure and something out of the ordinary in their lives. And oftentimes they will seek fiction in order to achieve that. And the way to deliver wish fulfillment in your stories is to give your character a special ability, special status or position, or a special opportunity. And in most cases, these things are not going to be earned. They're just gonna kind of fall into the character's lap. Think about, for an example, uh, think about Spider-Man. This is a story about a high school loser, just a regular guy, Peter Parker, and he's, he's just normal until he gets bitten by a radioactive spider, then he gets these superpowers. Another one to think about is Harry Potter. This is a story about an unloved child. He lives with his aunt and uncle. He gets bullied by his cousin until one day he learns that he's a wizard prince. He's the one who can challenge the evil Voldemort. He can also become a star athlete on the Quidditch field, and he can have a lot of fun at Hogwarts. And then one more example comes from the movie Rocky. Rocky Balboa, at the start of the movie, he's just this bum, this lowlife. He's a club fighter. He's nothing special until he gets a golden opportunity. He gets selected to fight the heavyweight champion of the world. He doesn't earn this. He doesn't earn this by fighting his way up the ranks. He just gets this golden opportunity because Apollo Creed just likes the sound of Rocky's nickname, the Italian Stallion. Now let's talk about power fantasy, and I'll give you a basic definition. Keep in mind there are tons of different definitions out there. This is just the Brandon definition, so you might see other ones out there on the internet, but for the purpose of this video, power fantasy is a story in which the hero has the ability to do anything they want, defeat anyone they hate, and seduce anyone they desire. And they probably also have a lot of other great traits and other positive things about them as well. You might have a hero who is strong, intelligent, skillful, and generally good at everything. You might have a hero who is admired by others. Everybody wants to be this hero's friend, and the hero's constantly getting romantic attention from attractive people. Oftentimes in these stories, there is a lack of consequences for the hero's mistakes, and that's even if they make mistakes to begin with. Sometimes these heroes rarely ever make mistakes at all. There also tends to be a lack of self-examination of the hero's actions. Oftentimes you'll see a hero kill 20 different henchmen while trying to get to after the villain, or maybe the hero will blow up half the city while trying to stop the villain, and the hero never stops and actually considers whether or not it was worth it to blow up the city or worth it to kill all those people. The hero will just keep moving along, keep doing their thing. And another Another thing with power fantasies, they usually involve battles against a higher power that we love to hate. The evil empire, the evil mob, the evil this, the evil that, whatever it may be. And one last thing to keep in mind with power fantasies, they involve wish fulfillment. And this is a very important ingredient here because audience members, when there's that wish fulfillment element there, they want to step into the shoes of one of these heroes and get involved in these types of stories. Now keep in mind that not all wish fulfillment stories are power fantasies. For instance, Rocky is a wish fulfillment story, it has that golden opportunity, but it's not a power fantasy because Rocky Balboa, the character, he's not intelligent, he's not generally good at everything, he's just you know, he's a boxer, he gets a lucky opportunity, and he seizes it. But he's not somebody who's super intelligent, he's not skillful, he doesn't have women throwing themselves at him, he has to really struggle to get with Adrian. So Rocky is an example of a story that, okay, yes, it is wish fulfillment, but it is not a power fantasy. Now, if you want some examples of power fantasies, look at pretty much any superhero story out there. Think about Batman. Think about how Batman is usually portrayed. He's usually portrayed as this physically strong character who is also 
intelligent. He's the world's greatest detective. He's skilled. He has all these gadgets he can use. He's wealthy. He's attractive. He's influential. And he's a man who gets a lot of attention from all the different people in Gotham. Everybody wants to be around him. And he's somebody who rarely makes mistakes because, again, he's powerful and he's intelligent. Other examples of power fantasies include the Star Wars sequel trilogy with Rey. They include James Bond, Indiana Jones, John Wick is a good one as well. John Wick just plows through all these different enemies. He's shooting people left and right. Other examples include many different manga and anime stories. Dragon Ball Z, things like that. And then of course, many different video games. And video games are a great example of this because in most cases, you're choosing what the character does, what they say, what they do, who they kill, and so on and so on. Now, although some of the most popular stories are power fantasies, there are audiences out there that just hate these types of stories. They look down upon them. And usually the main criticism is the main character being overpowered. Some audiences just hate seeing a main character who just has their way with everything. They stomp all over the villains they get whatever they want they're never seriously challenged or seriously heard i mean think about think about any time you watch a superhero movie and you see a superhero get blasted by a rocket or they fall off a building or something they, when they hit the ground you know they're going to be okay and some audiences don't like that another thing that some audiences don't like is with the the wish fulfillment type stories where something falls into a character's lap and then all of a sudden they have things going great for them they have this golden opportunity or this superpower or whatever some audiences hate the message that is being sent there that you don't have to work in order to be good at something or in order to achieve something. So keep these, these complaints in mind when you are writing your stories, especially if you are writing a power fantasy or something like it. But despite those complaints, these stories are still loved by many. And they're loved because we get to experience the narrative by putting ourselves in the character's shoes. We see and act out our own fantasy through the stories of these characters. And it's important to keep in mind that many stories are a form of power power fantasy. We consume mysteries in order to feel clever. We consume adventure stories in order to feel brave. We consume romance in order to feel desirable, and so on and so on. And it's also important to remember that audiences don't always want to consume challenging or complicated stories. Not everyone wants to come home after a hard day and read Infinite Jest or Moby Dick or something like that. Sometimes audiences just want to simply have a good time or imagine themselves as someone else. And one other reason why these stories are so loved is because you gotta elevate heroes some way or another in a story, and if you're going to push them all the way to the top, sometimes that works. Okay, so what's the takeaway here for writers? What can writers get out of these types of stories? I think the key thing to remember here is audience satisfaction. This is so critical. And whenever you deliver a wish fulfillment kind of idea, you attract an audience who is looking for some kind of escape or some kind of adventure or some kind of just you know, way to step outside their comfort zone, way to feel like they're more than just somebody who goes to school or goes to work five days a week. And if you're writing a story, ask yourself, is there a fun, intriguing idea that can get an audience on board? If there isn't, you may want to rework your story and find a way to get that wish fulfillment thing going there. Another thing to keep in mind is that you can create exciting heroes without having them be overpowered. You can give your heroes some exciting skills or you can make them super intelligent or super strong, but make sure that they have drawbacks in other areas or make sure that they make mistakes and they pay the consequences or they have situations where they have to stop and examine their actions and think about whether or not what they're doing is right. A balanced hero doesn't need to be a boring hero. So remember that when you're writing your stories. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is your favorite wish fulfillment story? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books and be sure to leave reviews on Amazon. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And then Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. It's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he cannot put it down until he kills six people with it. Also, be sure to check out my other videos. Like, share, and subscribe. And as always, remember to keep on writing.